There are several ways that you can filter or sort the data in a in an Excel table. And what I'm going to show you right now is a method that converts the data range itself into a table. And when we do that, then there will be built-in tools that will help you with sorting and filtering. This is a spreadsheet that I've downloaded from the United States Census Bureau. And it shows, of course, all of the citizens who voted in the November 2012 election. So this is just exactly the way the spreadsheet comes down from the Census Bureau. And the first thing we, we know that we need to do as we begin to prepare this data range to be converted to a table for filtering and sorting, the first thing we have to do is understand the table. So let's just start looking at the table and see what we have. The first thing I see up here in the upper left corner, I see rows two, three, and four. Where in the world is row one? And if I scroll, I'm moving my scrolling wheel and I cannot move to a cell A1. So if you ever find that there is a hidden column or a hidden row, then what you can do is just simply come up here and in the name box, go to either a cell, go to a cell that's either on the row or column that you need to go to. In this case, it'd be helpful if I could just get to A1. So I'll type A1 and go there. And you can see that now I just have a little tiny green bar up here and it's telling me, showing me that that is actually in cell A1, but I still can't see row one. And the reason is, is because the height of the row has been changed. So I'm in cell A1. I know that because I can see it right here. Then I'm going to come here on the home tab over to format and I'm going to select row height. And let's just give it a row height of maybe 15. All right. So now we can see that uh, here is row one and whoever created this spreadsheet just decided to hide whatever that is on, on row one. No big deal. It's just that we don't need it. We want to get these labels. These are column labels right here. And we want to get these up to row one. That's our goal because we are going to convert this data range into a table and our columns are going to have to have headers. And these right here will provide the headers that we're looking for. So what I'm going to do is take this information, rows one, two, and three, I'm just going to left click hold on number one and drag down to number three. And I don't want to delete that data right now because I might need it later and I could just stick it somewhere where it's out of the way. So I'm going to highlight those three rows and I'm going to right click and then cut. I'll just scroll down here to the bottom somewhere and just paste those in right there. So there are those three rows. And now I come back up to row one, two, and three, and you can see that now they're blank and that's not a problem. Now I wanted, as I told you, I wanted the information here in row five to be the column headers, but watch what happens here as I select these. I'll just left click, hold, drag. And watch what happens when I get to column C. All of a sudden it jumps up and grabs the information that's up here on row four. And why would it do that? When I highlight just row five, when I get to row C, it jumps up and selects the row above it. Well, it's because the information, see the difference in height here of these three cells compared to like this cell here on D5. The reason is, is that when I click on C5, watch this icon right here, merge and center, watch what it does. I click on it. Ah, and it shows me that this is turned on. So the merge and center option is selected and I want to deselect that. This cell here is not merged. This cell is, I want to unmerge it. And now what I can see is now I have a cell right here is the same size as all of these others, but that information is up here on row four. So all I'm going to do is just move the mouse down to the bottom border and I get this north, south, east, west arrow and I'm just going to pull down and just drag those values down here. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to turn off the merge and center, click on that cell, drag that value down, click here, unmerge that, click on this cell and pull this down. And now if I highlight these cells, I can pull them all the way across 
and I, I don't have any problem with it trying to select what we have in row four. Now, the question as I have to ask as we are continuing to analyze this table is, do I need to keep this information here on row four, where it says registered and voted? The table here under registered says total registered, percent registered, margin of error, which we don't even need. And now it says percent registered, margin of error. And then over here under voted, it says total voted, percent voted. So these column headers right here, these are all descriptive enough that we really don't need this registered and this voted section up here because we can see that registered, it says percent registered. Voted, it says percent voted. So we can just get rid of this extra information. So I'm going to click on row four. And this time I'm just going to right click and select delete and just get rid of all of row four altogether. And now all of these headers become row four. But I want these headers up here. I don't have to have them on row one, but I like to. So I'm going to select row one, two, and three. And I'm going to right click and delete. And that moves the entire table up to at cell A1 and down. Now, I've gotten the column headers all prepared. Now what I need to do is I want to select the data range itself and give it a name. So I'm going to select all of this. This is the range. Ooh, I see one more thing I need to do. Down here at the bottom, we have a, a row, row 54, right here under the listing for the row information for Wyoming. This row is adjacent to this range that's going to become a table, and that's going to give us problems. I want to get rid of all unnecessary columns and all unnecessary rows and get this cleared out. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to right click and cut. And I'll just come down here below where I pasted that other and paste this in here. And there is that. And now there is no information here on the bottom side of this table. And we have no information in this column here. So this column is clear and this row is clear. So there is nothing adjacent to the table. So I'm going to select all of this. And I'm going to give it a name. And we'll just call this Voters 2012. All right. So there is now a name for our our data range. I can select this and it takes me right to that range. Now what I want to do is to convert this into a table. And you might say, well, it looks already like it's a table. No, it looks like it's a spreadsheet, but let's convert it into a table. And the way I'm going to do that is to come up on the insert tab and then right here under the insert tab in a group called tables, you'll see the table options. So just click table. Notice you have the little marching ant running around the uh, selected range. And so it tells me that my range is $A, $1, down through $M, $53. And I can just look at the data range and tell that that's correct. You also want to make sure that the box is checked that says my table has headers. And then that will make the information up here in row 1 to be the headers for all of those columns. So I'm going to click OK. And wow, look what it does. It gives it colors. It highlights every other column, gives us colors up here for the headers. And notice that every column now has an option arrow here for filtering. So we can sort this A to Z. We can sort this Z to A. We can come in here and sort it for every way that we can think of. We can even deselect everybody and just say, show me only the states that start with an A. And there we go. We got only the columns that start with an A. So this gives us very, very powerful way of controlling the data range. And we do that simply by turning it into a table. So what I'm going to do is if I wanted to keep working on this table, I could. And I'm going to do a couple more things. Notice that whenever I click in the table that's been created now, and every column has a drop down where we could filter and sort. Then I notice also that up here on the ribbon that there is a context tab called Table Tools and there's a tab called Design. If I click on Design, then here we have options for things like Total Row, 
first column, last column, banded column. These are called banded columns where the colors alternate between each one. Right now you see banded rows, but we can convert these also into banded columns. But let's go ahead and give it a total row. So click total row. And we'll scroll down and see that now there is a row down here for tables. And if I wanted to come in this one here, the total population, I could click on, say, give me the total, which would be the sum. And it tells me 470,000. But that's because the option here for the United States is still in here. And we want to get rid of that. So I'm going to highlight row 9 and right click and just delete it. We don't need the totals up here in the table itself because we're going to put the totals down here. And so here is that total, 235,249,000. Remember, everything is being expressed in thousands. And if I wanted total citizen population, I could just come here and click sum. Notice my options, drop these arrows give me several options. I could get some, I could get total, I could get average, I could get just about anything I wanted there. I want the total votes here also to be selected. So let's get the sum of those. All right, so we have the sum of total registered voters right here. And we have the sum of actual voters here. So 132,946,000 voted, but there were 153 million. So it looks like that, what is that, uh, 21 million people did not even vote in that election. Okay, so we have our, our data range now converted into a table. If we wanted all of these states to be in alphabetical order, again, we could just come over here and say sort it A to Z. If we wanted to have the votes the total number of votes that were cast, then we could come over here, click uh, largest to smallest. And again, now we see that California had the most votes cast. And then right after that was Texas and Florida and so on. So this is something that we've already seen before, how to convert a data range into a table. And we can use this total row down here to help us get all of those totals that we need. There will be times where you don't want your, ta your data range to be a table anymore. You want to convert this back into just a plain old data range. And the way we're going to do that is by coming back to the same place here on the Table Tools Context tab. Now you have to be in the, ta in the data range somewhere. If I click outside of the data range, outside of that table, notice that the Context tab goes away. I have to be in it in order to do anything with it. So I'm going to click here on design and then there's a nice little option right here that says convert to range. So I click that. It says do you want to convert the entire table to a normal range? Yes. And what it did, it took away all of those filtering sorting option arrows that we had at the top of each column. It leaves us with a nicely formatted table with banded rows and with sums at the bottom in these total rows that we created. And so now it's just back to a regular old data range, but it's all formatted. This is one of the ways that we can filter and sort data in Excel. We can convert our data range into a table and then get it the way we want it and then just convert it back into a data range. In another video, I'll show you how we can use other methods to filter and sort this table.